Good afternoon again, everybody. It's Bart from GiantScaleNews.com. And um, this next video, this is a short one. I'm just talking about uh, installing the hardware and the servos into the wings. And what I have here in front of you is a piece of blue masking tape with a line drawn down the center. And what that line is, is a straight line uh, perpendicular to the flying surface uh, where you could see the hole for the control horn and the line perpendicular to the control surface going to where the servos mount. Now, we talked in the last video about how World Models gives you these nice hard nylon servo arms and in them they mold a bearing. So, this is nice hardware, it works well. Uh, it looks like it would be fine for the job, but depending on which type of round servo horn you have, that's going to place this arm in a different position in the slot. And you can see the line doesn't line up with the center of the slot to begin with. So this uh, is not an ideal situation, obviously. Um, there is some variety in where this arm is going to be placed just based on which servo parts you have uh, from your servos. But there's two ways you can handle this. So what they give you are what are called uh, clevis rod ends. And you can see that. That is a clevis rod end. You can see it's got two arms, right? And what that does is it just slides over this control arm. So what that does is it just slides over the arm and it's got one, one degree of freedom to it. It can go up or down like that. It can't go side to side without accelerating uh, wear and causing it to fail. So a lot of times people will take a clevis type rod end and replace it with a ball link, right? So this is a ball link and it's got a little ball joint molded into the nylon and that has a little bit of side freedom of motion as well as up and down. And when you use that, this alignment becomes a little bit less critical but I'd like to use as much of the original hardware as possible and in order to use a clevis oops <laughs> in order to use a clevis type rod end you need to make sure your linkage from the flying surface to the servo is as much in line with the motion of the servo you know the plane that the servo arm is moving in and also, it should be perpendicular to the flying surface. So what I need to do is find the right combination of hardware to get this arm on this line or the control linkage needs to be on that line. So let me show you what I've done. With the kit, you're going to get both a longer push rod and a shorter push rod. And these are just steel rods. It looks like the threads are rolled into the rod. They're not cut. So uh, right off the bat when you look at these um, they seem fine but I'm really not happy with the fact that the threads are so shallow there's really there's no depth to the threads so I'm concerned and some of you have mentioned this uh, in the thread also that when you thread these into these hard nylon links um, they're not going to do such a good job of cutting threads and really hanging on in there so right off the bat um, I've decided to replace the push rods with uh, titanium push rods. Now the lengths of these, the longer one is about five inches and the shorter one is about four and a quarter inches. And I wasn't able to find a manufacturer who had both of those sizes in one design of push rods. So what I've ended up having to do is I'm using Hangar 9 uh, Pro Links for a five inch titanium turnbuckle style push rod and I'm using the 80 millimeter one from Red Wing RC and that one comes out to about 4.33 inches total. So those are the two products that I've had to go, go to in order to replace these two push rods on the wings. So a Hangar 9 Pro Link 5 inch and a Red Wing RC, um, a Red Wing RC 4.33 inch. Both are turnbuckle style, so there'll be a right hand and a left hand thread uh, on those push rods when I get them. So. Here we have a five inch pro link from uh, Horizon. And because of the position of this control horn on the wing, where it lines up, there wasn't really anything I could do to make uh, 
the use of a clevis end on both ends possible. And because of the position of the control horn on the servo or the servo arm, um, I couldn't really make it work. So in this case, I had to switch a couple things. Okay, so for this connection, I not only had to change out the clevis style rod end with a ball link or a ball joint, I also replaced the stock control arm with an SWB control arm of the same length. And to get that all to line up, I had to put an eighth inch spacer under the servos to move the servo over to the correct spot. And the end result is that when this is all assembled, the control is perpendicular to the, uh, the aileron. So there's not going to be any sideways motion for this clevis uh, style rod end. And it's also the control arm, uh, or I'm sorry, the servo arm also, the plane of motion is parallel to this control arm. So when this servo is going up and down, that push rod is remaining in the same line. It's not moving left and right, causing strain on this clevis style rod end. Okay, so that's the aileron. I had to put a spacer. I had to put a spacer under the servo, eighth inch. I'm using an SWB control arm instead of stock. And I had to go with a ball joint in order to get it all to line up. And it's it's fine now. So that's that's not such a huge deal. The flap end of this, I also had to change out the control rod. So this is where I'm using the shorter control rod, the 4.33 inch from uh, Red Wing. But on this one, I took the control horn and instead of mounting it like this where that add-on horn is on top of the servo part or the servo arm or horn whatever you want to call it um, I actually took it off and mounted it under so there's a, just enough clearance for the the bolts or the heads of the uh, the little metric um, allen head bolts there's just enough clearance so they're not hitting the case of the servo and by putting it under, instead of sitting it on top of the uh, servo arm, the alignment is also uh, just about perfect. So with this setup, all I'm doing is replacing the arm. I've changed the location of the, the servo arm, the add-on from World Models. Um, I flipped it over and I was able to get this to align. Now I just need, I'm waiting for the, uh, the push rods to come from Red Wing so I can complete this. Okay, now you're looking at this saying, well, why did you mess with all this stuff? Why didn't you just move the control horn in the wing? And the reason for that is that, let me just focus. The reason for that is because if you look through the uh, covering material, you can see there's a plywood plate on the top and the bottom of the control surface. And then through those plywood plates, they drilled and glued a dowel in place. So that's what's giving the control horn rigidity within the flying surface. But because it's only going through a dowel that's maybe 5 16 or 3 8 in diameter, there's not a lot of wiggle room to move that hole. I could just fill the hole and then move it, but that would involve filling the hole and then trying to precision drill down through the control surface to place this exactly perpendicular so that it all lines up and functions uh, the way it's supposed to. So. I just took a little time, I played with the position of the hardware, I took a little time, played with the position of the hardware on the servo end, oops, get that right, so I just took a little time, played with the hardware on the servo end up here, and between a combination of different servo parts, different types of connectors, uh, replaced a couple of push rods. I was able to get combinations that worked, okay? And I'll outline the equipment for each connection, but if you're gonna be building these, uh, if you're gonna be building this airplane, if you come into a similar situation, at least you know it could be resolved and it doesn't require a huge amount of money to make it work, okay? But I'll list the parts that I used in the thread. Um, the last thing, this is a high wing airplane and there's no hatch on the top of the fuselage. So when you're gonna be plugging the wings in and plugging in the servos, you're going to want to have a little bit of uh, excess hanging out of the wing. So let's just take a look at that real quick. My shop is a mess, but here it is for you to see anyway. 
Um, so when you're doing this, uh, when you're assembling the airplane at the field, you're going to have to reach in under the, the opening in the uh, cabin, the, uh, the door that you saw in the first video that opens uh, up and down like a scale cub. Um, you're going to have to reach in there and plug in your servo connection. So the aileron is, let me grab my tape measure. The amount of the amount of uh, slack that you want hanging into the cabin of the airplane so that you can make connections is about as long as the servo wires, the stock servo wires are themselves uh, when you buy them. So figure this distance needs to be an extension, and then this whole distance just about needs to be an extension. And again, I'll outline this in the thread so you have it to read, but you're going to need approximately nine inches of slack for the flap servos and approximately 35 inches of slack or 34 inches of slack for the aileron servos. So figure a 36 inch extension for an aileron servo and about a 12 inch extension for a flap servo. And that'll give you plenty of extra once it's pulled into the fuselage where you could then manipulate it, plug it in and uh, get it ready to fly. Okay, so that's it for the wings. Um, I have the mix finalized in my JR9503 radio, my tried and true JR radio. I have the mix for the flapperons, and the next video is going to be uh, just a summary of the wing assembly. I'll show you the flap scheme that I have going, and uh, it'll be on to the fuselage getting that done. All right, so thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the thread. This is our World Models uh, Super Cub third scale build slash project, project in quotes. All right, thanks, bye.